Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm going to be going over the gameplay ability system on how to set up a dash ability. This is the Patreon request, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. I'm going to be using the gameplay effect to take away some health instead of my stamina, just because in this case, I've only set up my health UI or my health bar, as you see on the top. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is head over to my content folder, and I'm just going to create this folder called dash test, like so. Double click to open this up. And I'm just going to get some sort of random animation from Mixamo.com. So in this case, I'm just going to get this flying one, which is probably going to look kind of funny on our character. So let's just go ahead and import this. And once this is imported, all I want to do is just right click onto my animation. So you'll see it imports this flying animation. I just want to right click and retarget the animation to my Quinn simple because that's the default skeleton. You can double click it just to see how it is and then click export animations and I'll bring it over to my dash test folder like so and hit export. And now it's going to create this animation with my Quinn in it. So my Quinn's doing the flying instead of that skeleton from Mixamo. And I'm just going to right click this and go to create and create an anim montage. And I'll call this am underscore dash like so. And now I actually want to just create my ability. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, look for gameplay ability like so. And I'll call this GA underscore dash. And I'll double click to open this up. And on dash, the first thing I'm going to do is just assign it an ability tag. And I just want to create one called ability dot dash. I'm going to click on this plus sign and I'll use ability dot dash. And then for the source, I'm going to select the default gameplay tags at INI like so and hit add new tag. And then make sure you check mark it to select it. And when that's selected, I can go ahead and just set it to my activation block tags just because I don't want to double dash, just don't want to call it multiple times and so on. And now once we activate our ability in our blueprint graph, I'm just going to commit the ability like so. And after we commit the ability, I'm just going to look for a play montage and wait. And I'm going to right click this montage to play and promote this to a variable. I'll just leave it as montage to play. If you're not going to have any child actors, you can just select the asset over here. But I'll just go ahead and collect or select this just for teaching purposes. And when I hit compile, you'll see the montage to play section appears down here. And then I can just select that am underscore dash that we created like so. Double click it just to make sure it's the Quinn one. It is because that's the only one I made the animation montage for. Hit save and then Basically after this pin, I'm going to call something called apply root motion constant force. And now in between my play montage of weight and apply root motion constant force, I'm going to look for a get avatar actor from actor in info. And then the return value of this will just get me that get actor forward vector. And I'll connect this to the world direction and then I'll drag this out and then get velocity. And for this velocity, I'm just going to plug it into the Z velocity on finish and make sure that you want to change this velocity on finish mode to just set velocity. If you leave it as maintain last root motion velocity, then it's just gonna slide your character around. And for the strength, um, I'm gonna do something like 5,000, and this will determine how much force there's gonna be on your character during the dash. And the duration will be 0.2 seconds because this will determine how long that force will be applied for. And then on finish, I'm gonna drag this out and look for end ability like so. And I'll just do a little debugging. So at the event on ability, I'm just going to print string, which is going to say ability ended, or actually I'll write dash finished like so and hit compile and save. And now I'm just going to go over to my third person character and apply this to my character. So at the, so at the end of my begin play, all you would need to do is just call your ability system component. So I'll just drag out my ability system component, drag this out, give ability, and then I'm going to select that GA dash like so. Now my ability class says GA dash, and then I'll connect the pins. I'll just leave my mouse cursor on because why not? And we have this ability dot dash. Now when I go back to my BB third person character, I'm going to look for my ability system component, drag this out and try to activate abilities by tag. And for the gameplay tag container, I can just right click this and promote this to a variable which I'll call ability four, tag this in. And while you have ability four selected, make sure the default value after you compile is set to that ability dot dash. And now I'm just gonna look for a debug key V so that when I click V on my keyboard, it'll use this ability because we have given it on begin play. <laughs> and that's all we need to just test it out. So when I go back to the demo and actually test this out, when I go ahead and click V, you'll see my character is gonna just dash forward and start playing that flying animation. And you'll see that it only does that startup just because um, we didn't actually cut off any of the animation in the beginning. Yeah, it'll just go straight to that animation. And now when I test this out and click V, you'll see that it is playing this animation. So what if I wanted it to cause some stamina instead of just my character 
will just basically be flying at this point if I just spam it. So it's actually kind of cool, not gonna lie. It's but yeah, just constantly clicking it would be uh, too much. <laughs> but yeah, my character can basically fly. <laughs> yeah, he's flying now. He's flying super fast. All right, let's go ahead and uh, just I need to stop playing around. Let's finish the tutorial. So now I'm just going to go back to my my dash test folder. I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class and look for a gameplay effect. And this is where I can add stuff like how much it's going to cost to use this ability. And so I'll call this GE underscore dash and how much if you wanted to apply damage or something and so on. So for the GE dash, I'm just going to add a simple modifier and this modifier will be affecting an attribute and this attribute will be my current health. And I'm just going to add this by a negative, let's do negative 25. So each time I use it, it'll cost negative 25. And then I'll just hit compile and save. And now I'll go back to my gameplay ability underscore dash. And you'll see this cost section when you're in class default. So it'll say cost gameplay effect. And I'm just going to select that GE underscore dash we created like so and hit compile and save. And now when I go back to my demo, I'm going to full heal myself. And now when I use this, you'll see my HP go down by 25 each time I use it. And just like that. And yeah, that's how you create a simple dash ability using gameplay abilities. And also let me show you. So basically when I'm at zero, now when I spam it, it's not going to work. But I want to heal myself and use it again. Or in your case, maybe waiting for your stamina, it'll start working afterwards. And yeah, that pretty much covers today's tutorial. This was a Patreon request. Thanks for watching Code of the Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.